This is one of the species that started the isopod hobby. Hi, I'm Russ of Aquarimax Pets, and today's isopod species profile is on Porcelio scaber. A native of Western and Central Europe, Porcelio scaber is now said to be found on every continent except Antarctica. The name of this species means rough little pig. Porcelio means little pig, and the term scaber, or scaber, as most people in the hobby seem to say these days, means rough, referring to the rough appearance of the many raised bumps on the upper body surface. This is in contrast to its smoother cousin, Porcelio lavis, lavis meaning smooth. This moderately sized isopod can occasionally reach three quarters of an inch, although I have rarely seen specimens that size. This is the largest individual that I've ever had. This species has many names, which vary from language to language, of course, and even region to region, the common sow bug being one of these names in English. Porcelio scaber was probably the first isopod ever to become widely available as a color morph. Porcelio scaber orange is sometimes known as Spanish orange because those first orange individuals in the hobby were descended from stock collected in Spain and isolated by Oren McMonagall here in the U.S. At the time, it was sometimes also called the giant orange. This was because most people keeping isopods were dart frog hobbyists, and this species was much larger than the diminutive dwarf whites and other very small species that these dart frog hobbyists were familiar with. The introduction of much larger isopod species in the hobby, such as Porcelia Hoffman's agai, has since caused the term giant orange to become much less popular. There are now numerous morphs of Porcelio scaber available, several of which I keep, in addition to the wild type, which is a basic isopod gray, and the Spanish orange that I already displayed, here are several more. The calico is a morph that varies widely in color. Some look like wild types, others are orange, but many have flecks of various colors all over their bodies. There are even many sub-variants of calico these days. The Dalmatian morph has a very pale background, and some Dalmatians have irregular dark markings distributed all over the body, while others just have some tiny flecks of dark pigments, and still others look almost entirely white. The orange Dalmatian, just as you would expect from the name, is a morph of, or variant of Dalmatian, but it has orange markings in place of gray. The piebald morph is due to a different gene altogether, but this morph almost looks like a reverse Dalmatian. The dominant body color tends to be gray with random paler areas. Orange Koi is one of my favorite scaber morphs. It looks something like an orange Dalmatian, but most individuals tend to have more orange coverage than a typical orange Dalmatian. The genetics are distinct from the Dalmatian and from the piebald gene. The major difference in expression between Koi and piebald is that the patches of colors tend to bleed into one another in koi, while they are usually more cleanly separated in piebald, and I really love the look of the orange koi. Lava is probably my very favorite morph of this species. Many believe that the lava gene is co-dominant, as heterozygous individuals seem to express both wild-type coloration and some red or orange coloration, while homozygotes express more of the reddish coloration while still expressing a little bit of the wild-type color. Lottery mix is not a true morph per se, but it's what happens when you put lots of individuals from different morphs together. Even after many generations, you get quite an aesthetically pleasing variety. Those are just a few of the many morphs of this species. If you want a lot of variety within one species, this one is a great one for that. As far as breeding is concerned, Porcelio scaber reproduces fairly fast. It's not quite as prolific as, say, Porcelio lavis dairy cow, but with good care, it will produce numerous offspring quite consistently. Before I talk about caring for Porcelio scaber, allow me to thank my patrons at Patreon. Not long ago, during a live stream, the microphone that I use to record YouTube videos broke. Due to the help from my patrons and some super chats, I was able to replace my broken microphone with a much better one quite quickly. So thank you again to everyone who contributed. That's just one of the ways that Patreon helps make my channel better. And as a patron, you receive benefits as well. If you'd like to help support Aquarimax Pets on Patreon, please check out the link in the description or click on the end screen at the end of this video. 
And now on to care for a Porcelio scaber, which is simple. This is a really adaptable species. A couple of inches of base substrate, plenty of leaf litter with a hydration station at one end of the enclosure, consisting of damp sphagnum moss, will serve this species well. Low, moderate, and high ventilation are all accepted by this species as long as the enclosure is not allowed to dry out. I prefer to provide a moisture gradient for this species as I do with almost all of my isopods. So the side of the enclosure furthest from the mossy hydration station can be fairly dry, but this species can do well even if most or all of the substrate is slightly moist. Cork bark hides or similar will be utilized and appreciated by this species. Individuals will of course hide under them, but this is a species that will also hang out on top of the bark quite often. The common sow bug has a vigorous feeding response. In addition to the leaf litter and decaying wood that most isopods crave, it is quite omnivorous. So a bit of vegetables such as raw sweet potato, zucchini, or squash will be accepted readily, as will supreme isopod chow, rapashi bug burger, or especially protein-rich foods such as fish food pellets. Porcelio scaber is often labeled a protein-hungry isopod, and it is in fact one of the isopod species that will sometimes nibble my hand when I put it into the enclosure. I can feel it, but it doesn't hurt a bit. For many years, this species was one of the most commonly used species as bioactive custodian in dart frog enclosures. Though it has fallen into disfavor with some, and has been labeled as protein-hungry, as previously mentioned, Dart frog enthusiasts kept it successfully in bioactive enclosures along with their frogs for years, and many still do. One factor that may be at work here is that most dart frogs, while they will not eat an adult Porcelio scaper, will happily snack on young juveniles, so the frogs effectively provide population control. It makes sense that a moderate number of isopods is less likely to cause problems than a large population of hungry ones, a scenario which might occur in an enclosure with something that leaves the isopods alone to breed unchecked. That said, Kyle Candillian of Roach Crossing surprised me during one of our interviews when he said that he keeps Centrobulus splendidus millipedes with very high numbers of Porcelio scaber, and both have been flourishing and breeding in that situation for quite a long time now. If you want to learn more about the cohabitation of isopods with a variety of other arthropods, including other species of isopods. Check out our interview here. Just to be safe, if you're working with a sensitive species, do your research before using Porcelio scaber as a biocustodian. So now, how is P. scaber as a pet or display isopod? I'd say it has a lot of points in its favor. For one, it's quite hardy, so it's great for beginners. It has many, many different color and pattern morphs, and a lot of those are readily available and not very expensive. Peascaber are not as bold or as day active as their close relatives, Porcelia labus dairy cow, but if left undisturbed, some will tend to hang out in the open on decor during the day, as I mentioned before. They also respond quite eagerly at feeding time. In other words, they're moderately bold and somewhat day active. To sum up, Porcelio scaber is a classic isopod species. They can serve as a biocustodian in some vivaria. It's tough enough to be a great choice for beginners and yet there are sufficient morphs for it to appeal to advanced keepers. If you haven't kept a species yet, just pick a morph you like and give it a try. Have you seen the other videos in my isopod species profile playlist? If not, please check them out, and then let me know which species I should feature next. And thanks for watching! I post videos every Friday with live streams on Wednesdays. Please feel free to share, rate, comment, and if you haven't already, subscribe! And then, Tap the bell for notifications all, so you don't miss my next video.